Captain, and uh, you forgot to say well dressed. So, so thank you. <laughs> my, my apologies. My, my, you're I no thought evil what or I said no was evil. enough. But I can't remember which I'll one I was supposed note. to say. He's Doug Gottlieb. <laughs> From Oklahoma State Star, former Liberty Star, Tim Scarborough. I'm Noah Kozlov. Thanks for hanging out with us. Clemson and Creighton. Creighton coming in was your dark horse. Have yeah. they played the way you thought they'd play? A little bit better than I thought they'd play, to be totally candid. Um, kind of didn't know what I was going to get or what we were going to get from this Creighton squad. They played unbelievable basketball in the semifinals. They completely, We just saw Georgia State throttle Georgia. And it was a similar sort of thrashing we saw last night, Creighton against Georgia State. I know the matchups are different. But, but Creighton, considering losing Marcus Foster, a 2,000-point scorer, Kyrie Thomas, a pro, and they're playing this well this early, they've been surprising. And how about Clemson? Clemson has not been surprising, quite honestly. We thought they'd be in the championship game. They've played well enough to win. Now, they struggled with Akron a little bit the first day. You know, it's the first day of a tournament. You're playing in the morning. But once they got it going, they showed they were the better team. Yesterday, they played even better. Now, today, they have probably their toughest opponent within this tournament. But expect them to play the solid defense and then get enough points to win the game today. All right, so as we take a look at the tail of the tape from the first two games, Monday and Tuesday of the tournament, a lot of this has to do with the offense from Creighton against the defense of Clemson. Clemson, Tim, you mentioned it was a 72-69 win in that opener against Akron, and, and Creighton has put up 93 and a half points per game. And look, they're moving the ball as and well. Let's just say if this game is played in the 90s, advantage Creighton. Clemson does not have quite that much firepower. Well, unless Clemson has 90 and <laughs> <laughs> they ain't getting there. No, but I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pace yeah. of play, pace of play is a huge, huge story in today's game. Yeah, I don't think they're getting there. So, they getting there. who who does Clemson need more from? Well, Amir Sims is a guy that will have a size advantage in the paint. You know, he's a six foot seven sophomore, and as you see on the tape, he moves well. He's strong. He's big. And again, Creighton will try to spread you out and go small. And when they do. Amir Sims needs to step up and knock down buckets. Only seven points a game so far. Not a guy that they look to to get a lot of shots, but I think today he will have an advantage. You look for Brad Brownell to try to take advantage of that. Yeah, and he's a guy who's also stepping out and shooting threes this season and already this season. Last year, just 14 all, do that 14 now, though, right? all year. Yeah, I mean, that's just a that's, skill that's set that's necessary as a big man. All right, how about for Creighton? Uh, I, I want to see what Davion Mintz throws out there as a point guard. When they struggled a little bit early on with Boise State in their opening game, he turned the basketball over. And then the second half, he played very well, and that's when they separated themselves. Yesterday, for the most part, um, he played pretty good basketball. Uh, you know, just look, you're going against two veteran guards that won 25 games in the NCAA tournament last year. This is a challenge to lead your team at both ends of the floor. All right, and Doug mentioned, Tim, the, the Clemson guards. So Marquise Reed has been phenomenal. Yeah, and he's got help from Mitchell, but Reed is the guy that pushes in transition. He's a combo guard, and if you don't come out and guard him, he will splash it in your eye from NBA range. Great decision maker, and that's what you get from a, a grad student guard, and you have a, four of those guys on this Clemson team. But Marcus Reed is the one that really gets it done. He hunts shots at times. He'll rebound for you. Nine rebounds in that second game yesterday. Look for him to get on the glass and get on the scoreboard as well. Uh, you mentioned, Tim, um, that Creighton goes small. They go small with Mitch Ballack at the four. His ability to hit shots, and he hit a bunch of them yesterday. That, that's paramount for this Creighton team. Additionally, he's got to rebound and defend with his guard, Amir Sims, or with his, with his matching up with even bigger Clemson offensive players. Ballack, I think, becomes the tipping point. He plays well. He shoots well. Creighton wins. He doesn't. They lose. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, if we have any kind of game like Duke and Gonzaga had today. Oh, man. That well, was a great basketball. I'm looking forward to that Cavaliers-Gonzaga game now. <laughs> Marquise Reed, Shelton Mitchell, Amir oh, Sims, David okay. Scar, Elijah Thomas for Clemson. And for Creighton, Mitch Ballack, Tyson Alexander, and Davion Mintz along with Damian Jefferson and Martine Crumple. So remember, you can comment to us on Facebook as the game takes place. And uh, Tim Scarborough is the one making all the hater comments. <laughs> <laughs> Say hi to Bob and Clay rooting for, or Bob and Kay rooting for Clemson. Thanks for joining us. Ten on the floor, everybody else with a nice view. And we're underway with Clemson controlling the opening tip in their orange uniforms and Creighton in their whites. I like Creighton's grays from last night. Sweet. I love alternate jerseys in general. 
I guess it depends. If you have traditional uniforms, you got great uniforms, then you stick with it. But if, you know, you just throw a little gray in there with baby blue. Well, I'm colorblind. I can't tell what colors they are. I just assumed it was <laughs> white, was, and I was, was hoping it wasn't gray. There's <laughs> Brad Brunell in his ninth season at Clemson, turned 50 last week. Is there had a Karen rooting for Clemson, Christopher rooting for Creighton. And Michael going with the Roll Jays. Jay wants to know when Doug's coming back to Omaha. Whenever I'm invited, I'll let you know how my schedule works out this year. I need to get there with Steve Lavin dollar beer night. Ooh. He'll sit in the stands and watch. <laughs> heckle Lavin, the way people heckle Kevin Durant. And a whistle off the ball, and the foul is going to be whistled on Elijah Thomas. It's Greg McDermott. Also in his ninth season, he turns 54 on Sunday. Running that up-tempo offense at Creighton. They come in at 4-1 and one out of the Big East. Can we call him Coach McBuckets? Sure. His son, he's, he's coaching Buckets, Dougie that's McBuckets. for sure. Yeah, no, it is interesting. Doug, you talked about that the other day, how he's really changed his whole coaching approach. Yeah, he was in Northern Iowa. They were a team of 1,000 sets, and then Iowa State, he got criticized at times for pace of play. It should be pointed out that you know, Wesley Johnson transferred one summer to Syracuse. He didn't see it coming, and that really kind of derailed the growth of his Iowa State program. But he, they had to play a slower pace at Iowa State to compete. The Creighton, he's opened it up, and it is a watchable brand of basketball. Laura Christopher, Abby Rose pulling for Creighton. Nice to have you. David, Daniel, Brian, Tom pulling for Clemson. The turnover. Alexander lays it in, and that's how we get the scoring started. Tyshawn Alexander, a very important piece, the leading scorer for this team. He and Damian Jefferson, Jefferson guarding the basketball, the transfer from New Mexico. Scara, strong take to the basket, and he'll go to the line as Alexander whistled for the block. And that was a great job by Scara. We saw him be aggressive yesterday going off the dribble. He's got some size, and you know, he plays the perimeter for them at 6'7", six 6'8". Six and Dan. finishes and gets himself to the free throw line. Take a look, slicing, and you know, honestly, Alexander looked like he was there, and he sealed off that drive, but got the benefit. Scar couldn't yes. convert that free throw. You mentioned the fifth-year fifth year senior, Scar, transfer a couple years ago from Valparaiso. Folks want to go full screen on their laptops, just scroll over the icon that has all the arrows above the emojis. And that's how you go full screen. Um, do you know how to get my iTunes password as well? So you know, <laughs> yeah, he's the tech guy. He's my help desk. The IT guy. There's Vince. Get it out, Amir Sims. Amir Sims making himself, making his presence felt at the defensive end. Take a look. Amir Sims comes. Look where he is. He's at the uh, he's at the elbow. The weak side elbow yeah. comes all the way over. Probably got away with a little foul on the body. Hey After Tracy, the block. Sarah, David, Michael, She, Phil, Rob, all pulling for Clemson or Creighton. Hunter Tyson checks in the game really early here. We're talking. Shot clock expires, but a second chance opportunity, and it's Damian Jefferson. Uh, Jefferson, an athletic, undersized, kind of 3-4 man, not a great shooter, but he is a quick jumper and tremendously active around the basket. Javen White couldn't handle the pass. Beautiful. What a perfect pass. Javen White just couldn't catch. <laughs> and then Mintz lost it. Pam Bruton from Harlan, Iowa for Creighton. Nice to have you. Julie Bowen for Clemson. 4-2, Creighton, Noah Kozlov, Doug Gottlieb, Tim Scarborough, Kristen Balboni, our stadium crew. The championship game of the Cayman Islands Classic. Eight on the shot clock. Sims never hit the rim. Pulled down by Ballard. Can you mention the athleticism of Sims as Crumple takes the three? Still not a natural perimeter player, even though he plays kind of a face-up four. Yeah, he'll have to develop as he gets a little bit older, too. He's just a sophomore. We going the other way? No, that's going to be a block. No one. I didn't see the and one come down. And one! There you go. 
<laughs> there it is. Shelton Mitchell will go to the free throw line looking for the three point play. <laughs> I, I, I don't wait. I don't wait for the official. I wait for Doug. There you go. To jump in with the and one. Well, Shelton Mitchell, again, we started his career playing at Vanderbilt. I think Kevin Stallings was the coach. Improves, improved immediately once he got here. Shooting percentage went down some last year, but that's because he was one of the go to guys as Clemson. Went from a coach on the hot seat to a coach getting a contract extension in the top 15 ranked team. Really good job. So what happens when you, go, to. when you go to the Sweet 16? But it was also not really a surprise. They were a good team all season long. Mm -hmm. Start of the season. They were. They finished third in the ACC, which yeah. is very good. Brad Barr now is Evansville native. Mitchell's whistled for the foul. Doug, when you think about the ACC, now the way it's comprised, when you take one of these jobs, say Georgia Tech, for example, yep. finishing in the top 10 is almost a success when you think about the programs in front of you historically, right? Duke, Carolina, Syracuse, Louisville, Virginia. I mean, you're already six down. Well, and, you know, last year, a year where, where uh, excuse me, Louisville's down. Tyson yeah. Alexander from deep. But we're Louisville's down, and you might have only had Louisville once on your schedule. You know? Yeah. Whereas last year, a year, if you have Clemson twice, yeah. you're like, oh, well, that's, that's, that's right. right. So sometimes it's who you play twice, but yes, it's a. And I didn't even mention the Florida school. Jim Laranega does a great job at Miami. Leonard Hamilton does a terrific job at FSU. Yeah, Reed really? traveled. And Tyshawn Alexander is a floor stretcher, boys. Yeah, he is. We saw him throughout the tournament. He go back to last year. I had to play more of the point last year. This is what he does best. Beat set. Jefferson finds him Look at that. in rhythm. That's NBA range. Oh. He knocks it down. There you go. They match with the Creighton Blue Jays. That's who Connie's pulling for. Froling. Two in the lane. Four Still point lead for the Jays. Sam Froling, the Aussie, comes in. A true back to the basket five. Also, getting a chance to take our first look at Marcus Zagorowski on the ball defensively, the freshman from Creighton. Nice. And a good take from Javen White. That's a deep three short. Sims the rebound. Sharon, Sparky, Robin, Ryan, Michael, all rooting for the Tigers. It's good to have you all with us here on Stadium Facebook. Did you go y'all? <laughs> I think he went y'all. Did he go y'all? I think I said you all. You know, no, he said y'all. You know, Philadelphia, though, we do say y'all. No, you don't. No, you don't. You but say, not no, you no, all. No, we say no. use, guys. Well, uh, yeah, we do <laughs> say use. That's true. There's Jefferson. Right hand. No, but he'll go to the line. Nina from Vancouver, Greg, Steven, David, Delande, Connie. Nice to have y'all with us. There you go. I mean, listen, at Clemson, South Jays. Carolina, you go y'all. Sure. John watching from Omaha, Roll Jays, along with Doug. You know, Damian Jefferson transferred from New Mexico. He really struggled during his red shirt year. He got hurt. He was homesick. You know, he's watching everybody else play. And he credits Coach Mack and Former J star Marcus Foster kind of straightened him out. Had a come to Jesus talk right around Christmas time. Yeah, Christmas time. Nobody around campus. It's cold outside. You're feeling sorry for yourself. You're not playing. And he refocused, rededicated himself. And they think he's going to have a big year in the Big East. From East Chicago, Indiana, about 35 minutes from Chicago. Etwan Moore's hometown. It's a tough side of the track. Yeah, Central High School, Etwan Moore. He's Greg, Greg Popovich from East Chicago, Indiana. Jefferson shooting 80% this week, so he's been extremely efficient. But you know, Doug, a question in my mind is which one of these Whap! teams? Whoop, that is deep. That was one I was like, why is Hunter? Oh, that's yeah. why Hunter Tyson's Splash. in the game. It's first Everybody goal of the tournament. I mean, Hunter Tyson, he checked in like two minutes into the game. <laughs> I was like, man, Hunter Tyson a little bit early. Look at this. Hunter Tyson just steps in. He's like, yep. Right off the beach. Now, he's from, it says Monroe, North Carolina. But you know, North Carolina, I believe that's pronounced Monroe, North Carolina. Okay. Piedmont High School. Marcus Zagorowski gets that That'll shot be a by goal ten. block. That's a bad call. Man, they call a goal on that. Yeah, they I did. I thought he blocked wow. before he back there. Yeah, me too. 
So give them two. It's an 11-10 lead for Creighton. You make the call at home. Release. Oh, that's, that's clean. Clean done. block. Clean block. Really difficult to, to call that in live time. Though. That was a bang-bang play. Yep. Agreed. Tyson again while you're up. Alexander the rebound. Tyson Alexander hands off to Marcus Zigorowski. Northeast Massachusetts. His half-brother, Michael Carter-Williams, former Rookie of the Year. Clemson on that perimeter defense. The shot clock is at 8. Forced to put it up oh, is Malik. It's like that today. Cold-blooded. Just like last <laughs> night. Hunter, he's like, Hunter Tyson, let me welcome you yeah. to Big East basketball. Wow. Eudora, Kansas. It's not terribly far from here. Far from Kansas City. It's pretty far from Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> A second chance opportunity. Count it for Marquise Reed. Well, we talked about Mitch Ballack and the importance that he has to this team. They're going to play a small lineup. They need him to shoot the basketball well. Last night he got hot. And that's not bad defense. That's just good offense. Yeah, but Reed, not to be outdone, we talked about his array of shots and his ability to rebound. Look at him go up amongst the trees, unabashed. Gets himself to the line in an and one. And free throw shooting right now, much to be desired. Reed is 24 points from becoming the 40th player at Clemson with 1,000 for his career. And how about right back is Marcus Zagorowski. Things just got real, didn't they? They did. <laughs> And the steal. Scar brought his man right to the basketball. Oh, oh. <laughs> now it's real. We're <laughs> off and running. Tyshawn Alexander. This does not bode well for Brad Brown now. I do not believe Clemson wants to get in the shootout with this team. Woo. Well, if you've watched the transformation of Greg McDermott's style as a coach, you shouldn't be surprised. But if you just tune in, hey, get off your phone unless you're on Facebook, buddy. <laughs> this is Marcus Zagorowski, the freshman. That's three. Whap. And then in transition, Tyshawn Alexander. The first, Cashaw gets the steal, looks for his teammate. He steps into one. And the Jays up eight. <laughs> He's so excited he fell down. <laughs> wow. All smiles, and rightfully so, up 8, 20 to 18 with 12.38 to go here in the first half. These two teams have only played once before. Remember this one, Doug? I mean, I know you like Clemson, big college basketball history, but uh, what year? it's what you're doing December 15th of 62. <laughs> that's, even before my, that's, even before, that's even before my dad coached there. My dad coached yep. at Creighton under Eddie Sutton. But what years was that? Early 70s? Okay. 70. Uh, early 70s. But it was a 20 point win, 87 67 for great. The late 60s. Yeah, <laughs> you, you Googling your dad? No, I'm texting my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Elijah Thomas kick out. Tyson short. And there is Elijah Thomas, a man on the board. Yes, he is. It's between he and Sims, they. They should be able to feast a little bit, get second chance opportunities for the Tigers, and they go on a jump ball before that timeout attempt. Now it's going to be Creighton basketball. Zigorowski lost it. Joseph watching from Greece. What time is it, Joseph? It's all great to me. What day is it? The same day. Is it? How many hours? I don't know. That's why I asked what time it is. They, we'll I find think, out. I think they're about ten hours ahead of us. 10? I mean, not worth eight. the conversation, fellas. Six point lead for Creighton. <laughs> oh, we got 12 10 to go in the first half. Uh, you're, you're the one who's the administrator. Took us to Greece. Right. I just asked him what time it was. That's it. You know what time it is. <laughs> Connor Cashaw <laughs> into the game. Time? <laughs> time to get ill. It's time to get ill. Zagorowski, offensive minded guard. This is Cashaw, who's the transfer from Rice. Rice is leading the score last year. Grapple on the block against Thomas. No help. Left hand dribble. Oh, and you better give Cromwell. him some help. Yeah, Thomas, Eli Thomas thought he was turning over that left shoulder, going back to his right hand. What? Well, can't help. Still shooters. 
But, but listen, Doug, if you let a shooters. guy catch the ball, yeah, I get that. But you can't let him catch it from about two feet away. I mean, you got to push him off that block a little bit. Smooth from Shelton Mitchell, who's dropping 17 and a half in the Caymans. And by the way, I got an update from my mom. 69 to 71, but she's not sure. Ask what time uh -huh. it is in Greece. Yeah. <laughs> she's all the old lady. There's Balak. Sure. It's just everybody come down and shoot threes. Steve Carter wants to know, Doug, your record for assists in a single game in college as Elijah Thomas now has four. Let me guess. 18? It was 18. Yep. How about this? 18 in a loss. Oh. And I got a technical foul. And I sat out five big minutes because that technical foul. Huh? Why well, you guys lost? 22 18. <laughs> Great <laughs> in front. From <laughs> Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> He had his red shirt pulled last year, and no pun intended, but <laughs> pulling well, off the red shirt. Yeah. When, when Crample tore his ACL in January. Yeah, Crample got hurt. They needed a big guy. They really liked him long term as a shot blocker and a rim runner. It's unfortunate that college basketball is not willing to do what football is done. Give, give guys where they can play, you know, a quarter of the season and yeah. still red shirts. That'd still be cool. Yeah, yeah. the four I agree. games now. And, College football, and it's added a whole new, the whole another level of strategy for coaches too. I mean, look what happened at Clemson—the quarterback, they pulled Kelly Bryant, and Kelly Bryant, because of the timing, is able to transfer. And I was a victim of that too. I played six games my freshman year, you know, and 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 I should have redshirted. I was planning on redshirting, and I got in some late games late. I ended up, you know, came back thinking I was going to be a freshman, and I ended up being a sophomore. That's two for Marquise Reed. Got to come up with a better fake injury. Yeah, or, or just say no, right? When the coach asked you to go in. Slip into the hoop. Didn't have a lot of options. Jeff Meyer wasn't having it. High shot Alexander playing great basketball. He read the hard hedge and finds Martin Crumple for the layup. We approach the midway point here in the first half. Thomas and Scara. Scara out top with Cashaw on him. Mitchell feeds the post. Thomas. Here we go. Straight to the rim. Boy, Elijah Thomas has really developed during his time of transfer from a &M. Face up, place him on the perimeter defensively. Little Kay floater. Caleb Joseph in the game. From Nashua, New Hampshire. Not often you have two players from New Hampshire. I mean, I, technically, Zagorowski played at Tilton in New Hampshire, but he's from Massachusetts. Two backcourt mates from New Hampshire. Well, Joseph, Canadian, isn't he? Scara. Went to Cushing Academy. Best player ever from New Hampshire. Has there been anyone better than Matt Bonner? Matt Bonner? I think so. Ooh, Tyshawn Alexander around and out, but he'll go to the line and shoot three. Matt Bonner, the White Mamba. <laughs> white Mamba. And here's Elijah Thomas, a little sweep. Goes to the baseline. There's Creighton. just no resistance there. Well, Creighton was doubling from the baseline, but it was just too quick. Yeah, and, and Creighton's gone small with Martin Crumple as the five, and he is nowhere near as mobile as he was. Darren says it's snowing in northern Greece right now. Oh, so it's winter. Oh, nice no, it in. doesn't normally snow in Greece. Nice to be inside. At all? No. Wow, man. It's Mediterranean climate. Global warming. It's global climate change. Climate change, yes. Climate dynamics changing. Michael Fleming, is this on TV? All depends. Do you have Facebook on your TV? And then, yes, it is. You can watch this on Facebook. Take it with you anywhere you go on any device you have. I watch it on TV. Facebook watch app. Yep. Now they have, you seen that new thing that Facebook has where you can call people? You guys haven't seen that? Don't call me, guys. No, it's like a video calling thing. Or even worse. But, but even better. No, not, oh, don't I, worry, I'm not calling I, you. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need to be sitting in my living room. All of a sudden, my TV pops up. Doug calling me on Facebook. Five-point lead for Creighton. We have to download the app, Doug. Thomas. Blocked. I'll give you the info here the next, next time I get a chance to look at my computer. Jefferson. Jefferson. Oh, 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 oh. Met at the top by Scara. 
You gotta know when uh -huh. to say no. Why would you shoot that? I don't know. But that, Ascara could have blocked that with his elbow. Yeah. Grapple. Thomas is giving him that three. Alexander against wow. Newman, and the freshman bumped him. Veteran move right there, though. A lot less contact than what was displayed by Tyshawn Alexander. John Newman, the third. Son of Johnny Newman. Went to Richmond and drafted by the Cavs back in 86. 18, 16 years in the league. Johnny Newman is a god in the city of Richmond, boy. I used to live in Richmond not long ago. I used to go to Richmond Spiders games. Johnny Newman's pictures are everywhere. Sometimes he shows up. Still looks like he can go, too. Alexander off the curl. Hey. Tyshawn <laughs> Alexander. The offensive efficiency of Creighton this week has been off the charts. Five for ten from three here in the first half. Thomas wants the ball, and Clemson going to the other side. He's getting frustrated. His 14 in orange. Creighton pushing. Jefferson Offensive. pushed off. He did. And take a look at Tyshawn Alexander, who is seven for 17 coming in from three during the tournament, and three of four now tonight. Nice ball screen. Steps over and Alexander the Great says, Vinny, Vinny, Vici, I came, I saw, I conquered. Thanks, Kristen. Tyshawn Alexander already with 14 on four or five from the floor, three of four from deep. Creighton shooting 48% from three during the tournament. 56% from the floor. 16th ranked Clemson down by eight. Noah Kozlov, Doug Gottlieb, Tim Scarborough, Kristen Balboni. There's Thomas. He asked for it. He got it. And he'll go to the free throw line with the foul on Samson Froling. You could tell that Thomas was getting frustrated. And they go to the timeout and he gets the ball in the first possession. Well, he's sitting there and he's saying, like, look, I have a mismatch and they're not helping enough on me. Give me the rock. I don't blame him. Brad Brownell, more importantly, probably said it during the timeout, right? Hey, fellas, listen. This guy, point him out. Sometimes coaches have to do that. Just remind his team what the first and second options are. Hey, Doug, Dan thinks you're the best. Thanks, Dan. Dan's last name, Gottlieb. <laughs> Meanwhile, Noah's, <laughs> Noah's getting me on Facebook to watch the game on both of my devices at the same time. How about that? God, I feel like I'm such <laughs> a man Noah is now. actually oh, the IT good. guy right now. How, do you, how I mean, do you do that? He's it's like, like move. My, it's like my click, dad click, click, playing click. Super Nintendo back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Which one's Mario? <laughs> Balak. Nice job by Thomas to extend the defense. they are going to extend it out that far. Balak's going to take it. And oh, comes up well short. Six the rebound. Shot. Now Creighton has staved off that first, excuse me, Clemson has staved off that first big Creighton run. Now can they get their guards going? Creighton plus seven. Mitchell, short. Zagorowski, skies for the board. Alexander's gonna pull it. Around it out. Now, look, you were shooting well early and that was working in transition. But now if you're Creighton, you want to move that ball side to side. You want to, you want to double the number of passes. I disagree. Clemson has. I disagree. I think you keep the pace. I, I, think, I think if you get it up and down, Clemson's not as good playing that game as Creighton is. So even if you miss that shot, doesn't mean it's a bad shot. Yeah, but coming down and just getting a quick three with nobody to help you in transition, I'd rather them guard you. That way, <laughs> that way it takes some of the juice out of their legs. Shelton Mitchell, that was nifty. There's a little ball movement. Keep that ball moving, and Clemson's a little slow afoot. And that's good ball movement, finding Froling underneath the hoop. And folks, if, if you're having bad reception or the feed isn't working for you, it's that, that's your a own Wi-Fi signal. Yeah, I thought somebody. you were going to say you're going to come out and fix it for him. No, I don't you're Mr. IT in here. Long rebound. Wow, by Zagorowski. 
That is a heck of a pass, isn't it? Zagorowski gathered the ball, spun, and threw it over yeah. his shoulder well, all in one up. motion. So just close all your other windows. <laughs> just have the game on, and you'll be fine. <laughs> Let's talk football, shall we? Saturday. I'm headed to FIU with Max Starks. How's your board? And fun? Danny Kluppinger. Board's good. Pretty good, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's Marshall and FIU at noon Eastern on Stadium Facebook. And then Max is going to drive from Miami to Boca. God forbid there's overtime. For FIU, no. for FAU and Charlotte. Marshall and, and FIU are both like 7 3, 8 and 3, right? Pretty yeah, good so teams. it's going to be uh, if FIU wins, then FIU wins the East. Right. And then the they'll Conference USA take East. on UAB yeah. in the Conference USA title game. Throwing. That's all Australian from Flop, Mike. Hey, Colin. <laughs> You know the people who care about the football teams? The people that went to those schools, just like you're watching for maybe a reason because you went to Clemson. Are, great. You, re are you responding to the haters on Facebook? Oh, Is that what you're just, doing? I'm just responding a little bit. In, a, in a pleasant way. That, that was a flop. And, and there's a difference between a flop and selling a call. That's a flop. And that double stack high post look. Fine line, though. Yes, fine line. Trap, who's struggled in this tournament. Very good athlete for Clemson. Don't be surprised to see him crashing the glass. Let's read. That's a pro move. But Clemson has not made the Creighton Blue Jays pay for play playing small. Oh, tossed that one away. And Crump about the handoff is coming. Clemson up the line, didn't go back door, and Crump just lost the basketball before the whole line. Where's your state? I'm sorry, Creighton beat <laughs> Boise State on Monday, 94-82, and then blew out Georgia State. They closed that first half against Georgia State on a 24-4 run last night. You see, you see that monster crowd over 1,000-plus from Creighton. 1,700 people. Really is impressive, man. <laughs> yeah. Swinging around. Thomas wants it, oh, and uh, nice job by Froling to okay, hold Brian on. to step the, in. The, co the coach in you says what? What should Marquise read about? Oh, get a better passing angle. Oh, take a dribble and improve take a your dribble angle. Improve your angle. Good take night. a dribble and improve your angle. Thanks to Scarborough. <laughs> Every coach you've ever played it's, for, ever. It, it's really simple physics. It, take a dribble, improve your angle, and that's an easy bounce pass in the post. Alexander, he's bumped going to the basket. Both these teams, though, they get their guards going downhill off of those ball screens, and when they turn the corner, extremely dangerous. Some fans out there who would like to see this pace slow down a bit, and some others who'd like to see it remain just the way it is. Thinking about a first half number, and Tyshawn Alexander connects on the first. Sean Alexander, a product of high school basketball power, Oak Hill. That whole thing we started at Oak Hill, the whole recruiting at Oak Hill started with Rod Strickland coming down from New York. And you're going back to my time. And now Rod Strickland, Rod exactly Strickland yesterday right. was announced hired by uh, the G League to help that, that transition that. program. It's like, it's like we and, were thinking the same way, Doug. And do you know who Rod Strickland paid, played for before he played for Oak Hill? Oh, before Oak Hill, no. Steve Bob Hurley? Steve Lapis. Steve Lapis? Former Jordan Nova coach, UMass coach. CBS analyst. That's Donnie, cool. there's four minutes left in the first half. It's a 36-29 lead for Creighton. Zigorowski had the free run, couldn't finish, Second got chance. it back. Love that kid right there. So tough, so smart. It's a kid who could start at a lot of schools. Oh, yeah. He could start here. You know, interestingly, and a, a quick question from John McCall, where's Amir Sims? You like Amir Sims. Yeah. And obviously, they feel the need to go smaller with the star at the fourth. But a, that's not a charge. No. Get out of here, Bob. That's not a charge. Simple spin move. Zigorowski, great baseline drive. Star forgets to stay and help. He's worried about Balak and quick jumps and lays that ball in. So that'll be a foul on Elijah Thomas, his second. 
So, so look, if, if you're Clemson, I would, I'm thinking about going small and well, they have Mitch, to. Yeah, but no, I would put a Mir Sims at the five. Oh, you go five. four guards. Well, no, just put a Mir Sims who's your three, four at yeah. the five. That guy is a party end. Because we're going to party with that one. guy. They're going four out one end. <laughs> yeah, that's right. been, that's uh, been a nonstop that life party. He yeah, has man. had a good time. You yeah. know what? Win or lose, yeah. he's had himself a good time. So you're saying Sims at the five and, and sit Elijah Thomas? Yes. Well, Elijah Thomas now has two personal fouls. You're going to yeah. take him out. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, he might end up doing that. But the reason we mentioned bench. Sims right there, that he needed to be the X Factor and, and take advantage, is because they needed to exploit when he and Thomas were on the floor at the same time and but prevent we, the small lineup. But we saw this with, with, with Georgia. It's so hard in college yeah, basketball. Difficult. It is. But I just, you know, you're going with White, and I, look, White's a big body, but he struggles to catch. He can't finish. He's just a big body. He's not a threat to score, really. No. Whereas Amir Sims. I mean, look, the crumple beats you scoring 30. Oh, <laughs> oh, he's got two to add to the four, so he's got six. I, I just, I, I disagree with the idea of always having to have a traditional big guy out there. No, I agree with that. Just, just because Creighton does doesn't mean you should. Georgia State, I mean, Malik Ben Levy, Correct. who hit six threes. That guy plays the I, I center. Was, he plays the five for that. Creighton will go small as well as Mark Keese Reed. David Edna Clark like that one. There are a lot of people who aren't rooting for either team who oh. like that first half score. A lot of points here in the first half. Those same people, what are they rooting for for the entire game score? A little yeah, bit more on. than double. This is a little Mike D'Antoni, Dan D'Antoni action what? here. You set that screen, dive. If they, if they, well, it's because Scara is trying to chase around Ballard. Yeah, you got your shooter spacing the floor. There's no weak side help. That's an easy lob for a dunk. Yeah, but whoever, the guy who's guarding Jefferson, you know, the guy who's guarding Jefferson yeah. and, and Hunter Tyson, Stay, he needs to be in help. In the paint. He needs to be in help. Yeah, regardless if Jefferson, of what Jefferson is. going to make five threes and they beat you. So be it. You know? Or if you, you can go close out when he catches it. You got it. That's the problem with Balak is Balak is such, has such respect as a shooter. And he's such so good at moving out the basketball. That's why the, the Warriors are so tough because there is no Jefferson on that floor. Well, there is. It's, but he's the he's the he's the pass. He's the guy Draymond with the Green. The ball Draymond exactly. Green can't shoot, but yeah, you can hide one guy. Yep. And he becomes the handoff guy. There's Tyson Alexander in the post. Tries oh, that turn sweet around move. over Mitchell. And he tried that sweet move mm -hmm. to get a foul. Mitchell, Fisher's not buying it though. Uh, Mitchell didn't bite the fifth-year senior. Scara follows his own shot, but it's Crumple on the rebound. Alexander, go ahead. Got it. Tyshawn Alexander's got four of those in the first half. You see what I'm saying, Doug? There's no, there wasn't anybody under the goal there either. That shot goes down. A little, little bit of a different possession, but I, I agree with you. A little, I mean, there, there was at least some guys in the half court. Yeah, he wasn't out I'm there just, by When you himself. get into the half court, move yeah. the basketball. Move there. Clemson is still big and built more for the ACC than they are built to play small ball. Um, Tyshawn Alexander going on a little bit of shooting, of a shooting spree himself. And, man, the range is ridiculous. And his ball spins a little funky, too. It does. That true it? back spin kind of has that screwball effect to it. But, man, does it go in. So how can Clemson slow things down a bit? Well, honestly, this this sounds counterintuitive. One, you got to score. Two, sure. you press after a made basket. Okay. Yeah. Press to slow them down. Yeah, but, but but not a traffic press. No, no, More like a, a one two, two one or a one two two. two. Yeah, yep. Yep. just slow them down. But throw that ball inside. Yeah. Now you a, get to the free throw line. Even a one three one half court you, would slow you, them down a little bit. The problem with the one three one is there's there's a lot of gaps in yeah. it. Yeah. And Especially you still want to play man-to-man -man defense. You just don't want to play man-to-man -man defense for yeah. 30 seconds, 26 seconds. You want to play it for 21 seconds. So ball goes to the basket. Got to make the second free throw. You get into a 1-2-2. Two, two, and then you have to look and you have to identify who's a shooter, who's a non-shooter, and constantly be talking. And especially in the first half when you're playing in front of your own bench. In this particular lineup, you know, Scara is, I mean, uh, excuse me, Crumple can shoot, but he's not a great shooter. Outside of that, you know, 
We got one other, you know, Davion Mintz is probably the other weakest shooter. He'll shoot when he's open, but it's not what he does best. And you really, you, you can't leave Balak, you can't leave Alexander at all. And now you got Epperson who comes in. Epperson's a shot blocker, he only rolls to the rim. You gotta decide how you're guarding the ball screens and handoffs with him. But to slow him down, if he makes his free throw, you should press. Press just to keep him in front. Creighton does a really good job, not just, not just running off misses, they run off makes. Which causes a lot of issues for a defense. They lead by 10 here as we approach the one minute mark. Is Epperson rolling to the rim? Oh! oh. You serious? That's, Epperson! That's, that's, that's really hard to do. Yeah! Look, hey, no, look, <laughs> no, 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 not just catch it. He just checked into the game. That's his first time up and down the court. He's all lathered up with SPF 75. <laughs> <laughs> He does get his power from the sun, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's Clyde Trapp. And they got to get Trapp going. But Trapp's the kind of athlete you can play in small ball because he's so springy. They have the personnel to do it. Maybe at halftime, they'll start thinking about that, too, just changing their uh -huh. whole approach. They have to. Because that didn't work. Again, that, that pace way too fast. Hey, and, I will give, and I will give you credit. You said if it gets to 90, it's a Creighton game. And right now they're on pace for 90. There's that same roll with Epperson. Zagorowski. Eight to go. On the time, Trap a very good driver. Great job forcing him to the corner. Reed for three. Short. And that's how the first half will end. Creighton 45-35. Creighton shoots 58.6% from the floor. First touch, first time down the floor, you pick, roll, and kind of a poorly thrown alley-oop, but boy, Epperson goes up, up, and away and gets it, and Creighton's gotta be super happy, not just with the shooting, but also with the pace of this game. Let's go over to Kristen. Coach, 10-point lead on the number 16 team in the country. Your offense is rolling. Tyshawn Alexander with 19 points already, but we know Clemson will go in and make some adjustments. How do you make sure that you stay hot in the second half? Well, I think the most important thing, there's 37 possessions. They have 35 points. I mean, it has to be our defense that gets the job done. If we can keep them below one point per possession, we're going to have a great chance to win this game. All right, Coach, we'll let you get to your team. Thank you so much. So Tyshawn Alexander leads the way with 19 points on the Clemson side. It's Elijah Thomas, who has nine. Marquise Reed, who we featured in the open with eight. Shelton Mitchell with seven. Clemson shot 52% from the floor. Each team took 29 shots, but Clemson just one of eight from three, and Creighton six of 14 from downtown, and each team with eight turnovers as well. In fairness, Creighton, that, that's how they play. Yep. Right, they're a high three-point uh, volume shooting and percentage shooting team. And I, look, I will grant you, we're only five games in the year, but Clemson, 39 threes on the year, right? So they're averaging eight, about eight makes a game. So they need to obviously pick up the tempo, but they're struggling with the mismatches that Creighton has created with their smaller line. They are who we thought they are, right? Th thought they were. And Creighton's not letting them off the hook. I thought they were. They, we, we let them off the hook. Yeah, but even, but even look back to Thursday when they played Ohio State and lost 69-60, and they were up 60-56 to 56 with about three minutes left. So credit Ohio State being able to take Creighton out of their comfort zone on their home floor. Went 0 for 5 to finish that game. And that's what Clemson will look for to start this second half. Mitchell, left hand, no. Great drive, beautiful set that was run with a clear yeah. out the lane for Mitchell. Well, they just got to make that. Yep, you got you got to cast that in for sure. It's Davion Mintz with the basketball, wearing number one for Creighton. Balak running through the lane. It's Crumple. The handoff to Balak. He has Scar on him in the corner. And, and, and what Clemson has changed, and you can see just one possession on those side handoffs and side ball screens. They're doing what's called icing them or bluing them. It means. You're not letting him turn the corner. The big guy drops all the way down into help, and you force the guard into that big guy. What'll be open there is the big the big man Crumple at the top, or Crumple getting to uh, kind of what's called a short roll. 
Alexander picks up right where he left off. And obviously one of the things you can do is what Creighton did, which is don't set screens on all, all the way over to the side. And the free throw line extended. Send him to the middle from what's called the slot, which is in between the free throw line. And the free throw line extended and the top of the key. Scar wanted the foul call, too, with the contact from Bullock. It's a 48-37 lead for Creighton. So let's see what Creighton tries to run with their ball screen stuff here. What I like about Coach McBucket's group, though, is on the half court, they're still pretty efficient. They don't need to run. See, now they're trying to force him away, force him to the baseline, not letting Tyshawn Alexander turn the corner. Once you get to the top of the key, it's more oh, difficult. Oh, 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 how about that time, though? Woo! That's, uh, that's magnificent. It's beautiful oh, coaching. Oh, it's so beautiful. So, so what, look, you, you, then you don't get locked in on the side. You get to the top, you set the ball screen. If Clemson wants to come all the way out, that's fine. Look yeah. at how spread out Clemson is defensively. They are spread out indeed. So, <laughs> so here's the first one. That's, this is called the slot. With Truffle setting it, he turns the angle at the last second. And, we, and you get a deep jump shot. And then now it's, they, they don't get locked in on the left side of the court. They set it to the middle. Look at how spread out Creighton is defensively. That's right down Broadway. Scar, of course, is guarding. Scar needs to stay in the paper. Yeah, right? but he's guarding Ballack. He's guarding and, so, and yeah. so Sims has to then rotate to yeah, Ballack. On the other side. But that's that's a hard thing to learn when you've had no prep. Takes, that takes a lot of communication. It takes a lot of communication, but also fun. they've had no prep. Yeah. No prep for this style. Yeah. Three games in three days for these teams down in the Cayman Islands. And it looks, they're looking to see if this is a three. Remember, the interior, the inside line is the three. That's yeah, a three. that's a three. The outside line is the FIBA line. Inside line is the college line. Keep those pictures coming. We love them, guys. In the same set Clemson ran to start the half. Just open up the defense with a little ball screen. There's Sims getting open three in the corner. Make a peg. Thomas, the offensive rebound. And he'll go to the line. Look, there's four Creighton jerseys <laughs> in the lane. Get it. Yeah, Mitchell and Reed spotted up. Kick it to one of them. Kick it out. Like it could be a big night at Randy Clancy's in Omaha if Tyshawn continues to do what he's doing. It's Thomas at the free throw line. He's three for eight coming in. He's been pretty successful there this evening, four for five. He hasn't look practiced this, much at all with the ankle. Crowd and the is flu. really impressive. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, 1,700 Creighton fans. A lot of locals as well, some Clemson Orange too. Demo of the Creighton fans in attendance. Average age, roughly 55 to 60 years old. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big hit. I'm a big hit for the seniors. Uh, <laughs> Moms always love me, Doug. 50 to 39. Creighton in front, and that's a foul on Thomas. Or check that, I'm sorry. That was the foul on Mintz. That's his third. So Zagorowski will enter with Mintz going out. And Michael says the party's at Frogs. I guess that works. And Thomas gets mixed up with Crompo, and Thomas is going to be whistled for the foul. So just a little bit early on the foul call on Thomas, and that's his third. Still an opportunity, I think. Missed opportunity for Clemson to try and go with a smaller lineup is Parnell having a word. And now you see Amir Sims playing is playing the four. And still insisting on using Javon White the five. Crumple is a big dude. I do understand it on some level. And let's try it. Scott may have hurt himself as he slipped when Ballack stepped on his foot. Creighton's got Gonzaga at home on December 1st. Gonzaga coming off that win today. The Maui Invitational against Duke. How good is that game, huh? Is that yeah. fun? They'll get Nebraska a week later. Huskers pretty good. Saw that Texas Tech beat them, though, last night in Kansas City. Got a chance to watch that game in person. The Raiders pretty good. 
Mir Sims cuts it to single digits. Rick hoping that Creighton just pushes oh, the pace. Jefferson. And there's Jefferson. Three ball from the corner pocket. And, and that's the shot you want them to take if you're Clemson. But not if he's going to splash it like that. He's been shooting the ball well this week. No, he has. That was a good shot. Look, he had time. Gather, good yep. rhythm, great balance. Shot it with confidence. Yeah, he's not one that you want to have firing up 10 a game and transition threes. No. But when he's in rhythm, off a good pass, yeah, it's a good shot. Jefferson's had back-to-back -back career highs in this tournament. Monday at 16. Tuesday, he had 20. He's got five thus far this evening, and his team is up by 12. Mitchell. There's a little change of pace, and Zigarowski got under him. Yeah, that was a crumple, crumple hit him oh. shoulder to the throat. <laughs> it is on crumple, his second. Mitchell, a fantastic driver. Marquise Reed, a little bit better in terms of being a 17 to 20 foot shooter. But this dynamic guard combination gives people fits. Greg McDermott, who spent five years at Northern Iowa, went to three NCAA tournaments. Not so successful at Iowa State. But very successful at Creighton. You know, you, you know it's interesting. Was at Iowa State, he had a kid named Mike James, who ultimately was drafting the NBA draft, had to kick him out of school for firing off a fire hydrant, a uh, uh, fire extinguisher. Lost him one year, then lost Wesley Johnson the next year. Honestly, that's what undid him and pace of play. Is that the Mike James who ended up at Duquesne? That no, Mike diff James? Uh, no, different one. No, uh, Mike, that ended up in the NBA, right? Yeah. Right, I know, that Mike James. Different one. This oh, one went, okay, different he one. Went okay. to the, he was the first player out of the G League drafted. Oh, okay. Reed, they needed it. Can't get it. Oh, Zagorowski. Zagged when he should have zagged. Second chance opportunity now. And the difference in the game is almost as easy as the three-point shooting. So you like this lineup now with Sims at the five as he steps yes. out for the three? Yes, the this is what I've been calling for. Oh, look out. Thank you for paying attention. This is where the <laughs> scar goes down. Yes, you, you, I, I understand that the old coaching, well, they do what we do and make them adjust us. Like, that sounds good, coach. Mm -hmm. okay. But they got us all spread out and switching and running like crazy. Now we're good. There we go. <laughs> you also, you have a volume button. No, no, you must, he must have gotten peanut butter stuck on that mute button. He should tell the players to stop playing basketball. If you're going to tell us to stop talking. Okay. All right, so we're Scar, here for a so jump. Scar is at the line. Refs, stop refs. The foul was on Jefferson. It looks like it's going to be a flagrant. So Scar goes one for two and... It's the flagrant on Jefferson, and yeah. Clemson will get the basketball. I didn't see it as a flagrant. I just saw it was two guys getting tangled. Well, and that's and what that, that like new point of emphasis, though, Doug, where if, if you it, – uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. It's, but they're trying to clean up the, the baiting of the officials. All right, so let's see if this works here. You got Sims playing the five against Crumple. But see, they have Sims playing the five and posting up. A nice little sweet move. Nice. And makes it. That works. I, I, I would still drag him out to the three-point line. And take Crumple out. Yeah, and, get him out and, of the lane. And then now you got driving lane. Yes. Right? Yep. Now they're trying to switch between Scara and Sims. Playing a, play a matchup, right? No, they're playing man-to-man. -man. No, they're just, just switching so man, between yep. four and five. Yeah. You know, switching one through three as well. Okay, they're downing the ball screen. Ooh, nice shot, shot Alexander. <laughs> Have yourself a game. Oh, 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 oh. Man, look out, Big East. Sophomore is balling right now. There's a pro move right there, and that's an offensive mm -hmm. foul on Sims. I mean, I don't even know how you argue with that one. Nah. Mm -hmm. I, mean, here's I just what, want to watch okay, the so when you're, on Alexander. When you're, when you're a big guy and you're being guarded by a legit big, okay? Mm -hmm. Face him up, mm -hmm. use your foot speed, yep. and sweep through. Instead, don't try and Debo and push him over. Let's just watch this, guys. It's a pro move. I can't do that. I can't do that. Never could or can't anymore. There, there was a time. I don't think I could. I, 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 I was a very good athlete. That's, 
the, the agility to change your hips in the ball. You can do that? Yeah, I absolutely could do that. That's, yeah, nice. that That's a great sick. finish. The lead is nine for Creighton. Not with a tie on, though. Not with a tie on. They're large they allowed us to 13. take the tie off <laughs> that we played. Isn't that cool? Around and out for Jefferson. <laughs> now you got a chance here, you're Clemson. Mitchell. Wow, so good. On the, on the floor. Come on. And we really haven't seen Mitchell get involved in this game, man. He, along with Reed, is the strength so of his Mitchell's team. like, how is that not? Oh, yeah. That's that James Harden lefty step through, get fouled. The voices you hear, I'm Noah Kozlov, Doug Gottlieb, Tim Scarborough, the former Liberty star, and Doug, the all-time leader and assist at Oklahoma State. Second all-time in Big 12 this year. Yeah, uh, Aaron Miles played one more year at Kansas. I've actually had more assists when you had him. The assist in Notre Dame. That's just all factual information. <laughs> you know, if you add in what you did in high school. Or then no, no, I, what I did in college, <laughs> but I only played, <laughs> only played three in years in the Big 12. 12. Yeah. Right. Yep. Kristen Balboni on the sidelines. Oh, oh look out. Oh, uh, right, right back to it away. So the Clemson's 11 turner for Clayton two for Creighton, straight up, three for Clemson. straight opportunities, right? Sims charges, and they get nothing out of that last possession, then a turnover after after the, the runner. Well, the good thing is the pace of the game has slowed down somewhat, and that helps Clemson. Well, they've also, it's helped them, um, you know, listen, some of it's confirmation bias, but Sims being in the game makes them much more athletic defensively. Yeah, I agree. And that's not, not a, a slight on Thomas. Not a lot of love for the officials in the uh, comment section. Shocking. The life of an official. Well, this is a good crew right here. Turn over the travel from Alexander. Sims for three. Yes. He see, got it. See, keep Crump yep. away from the basket. If you're going to have a stretch five, let him play a stretch five. Yep. And he's capable, as you see. Yeah. He can knock that shot. But even now, now that you hit one, that's really all you need. Yep. And, and when you score, you're making them attack your half-court defense. And they're running some solid sets, but they're not quite as effective oh, as when they're getting up and down. Zagorowski around and out. I mean, and I, I feel for Crumple and for the big guys. Yeah, just so a, just a little, soft. like, let's just play basketball. Mm. No flow with too many whistles. Yeah. So it's a foul on Crumple. This That's is, his third. This is reminiscent of the Ohio State game. Yeah, they never really let Creighton get up and down. I love this one. The score was Don, luck. Don Moore. Announcers must be Creighton. Grant. Just about to read it. Uh, <laughs> where, where'd you Brad, go to school? I, I, I didn't even know how to spell Creighton until yesterday. I didn't, I didn't go to Creighton. You know where'd I've been to Boston University. You no, know, I've never been to Omaha either. Or, or Nebraska. The state of Nebraska. He didn't like Peyton Man. There's another pick and pop for Sims. Gonna be getting a little too thirsty, but that was part of the play. Fans get so used to their homer call that when they hear a neutral call, it feels like oppression. Correct. That's the story of my broadcast. You know, Epperson, Epperson comes in. in. In close, too strong. Scar the rebound. Well, We've got a six-point game here. And, and, and interesting for Greg McDermott. He's got a couple bench players. Joseph out on the floor. You can get yourself in trouble here with too many bench players. Another offensive rebound. For Sims. I'd go back to Sims and, and get him on the wing and let him take Epperson off the dribble. Sims is a shot blocker, but not good laterally. Oh, man. Then the turnover. That's 13 for Clemson. Alexander, of course. It. It's a rare miss. Got the bullet there. Because he was open. He had his feet set and way. He's been casting those in on a fairly regular basis. Good defense by Alexander Alexander's against Reed. Been great on Reed. Really good on Reed. Yep. Mitchell with the left hand. Now you want to go at Epperson, make him move his feet laterally. Understand personnel, attack the weak personnel. And boys, we have a ball game. We're down to four, 55-51, with 11-52 remaining here in the second half. What an impressive turnout from Creighton. To be able to sit behind Greg McDermott and this Creighton Blue Jays team up by four. Eric White says, if Epperson's on the court, we need to attack him. Keep hearing how good he is on defense, but get to see it. He's a good rim protector. Yeah. If you take a rim protector away from the, the court and make him move laterally, that's the difference. Yeah, it's exposure camp at that point. 
And right now, he's a roll to the rim guy. He's very effective at picking and rolling to the rim. Alexander double dribble. Double. Yes, he did. Yep. This is a Creighton hold home game, Rich, Rich Huffman said. Look, anybody could have flown down sure. there. But Creighton doesn't have football the way that Clemson has football. This is their de facto bowl game. Clemson is right back in this for all the reasons you mentioned, starting with that lineup change. And even now, they can still do what they were doing with Thomas on the floor. Reed. Blocked by Epperson. That answer your question? <laughs> <laughs> Keep hearing, he's, look, he's a, for a young kid, he's a sophomore that they won the red shirt last year, really talented feel as a shot blocker in Rimmel. The rest, you gotta work on. Yep, he will, and he'll get better at those other areas too. 16 on the shot clock. Mitchell inbounds to Scar on the near side. He's got Reed and Hunter Tyson out on the perimeter with him. This is Marquise Reed. More good defense from Tyshawn Alexander. Yep. Forces Reed into a tough shot. Contested long two and then the run out. Look out. A hard foul and Tyshawn Alexander in transition. Remember last year they had Gabe DeVoe. That was a great three guard combo. And I just think this is a common foul. They're going to go look. There was body, nothing in the head, and I didn't think anything excessive. They're going to take a look at him. Though. Nice pass. Davion Mintz. And Hunter Tyson with the hard foul. That's just a foul. Just a foul, in my opinion. Sometimes. Let's, let's see. I mean, sometimes you get hit in the head on a foul, but he's not trying to hit him on the yeah. head. I don't think he hit, he hit him on I the head. I think he did. I think he grazed him. Enough to look at, but not enough to warrant a flagrant. In my They're opinion, give him a flagrant one. Wow! So it's just, it's just be two shots at that point, it's zero it's not tolerance. A foul. Right? Yeah, it's that's just, a foul. That's going, just a foul. You're going zero tolerance. There was a touch of the head, therefore it must be a foul. Oh. And I think you should use a little discretion. Yes. I don't think they have the leeway to do so. They but have think, the leeway to do so. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, they, they get evaluated just like everybody else, right? You you don't call that, and they say, hey, you should have called that because he did touch him in the head. You say of the it's law. a four-point game in a championship game. They're both competing. Nobody's trying to hurt okay. anybody. And the fall look worse than the you foul. Can, you can say all that to the evaluator, and the evaluator is going to say, yes, you're right. Here's the check. And I do mean the bad mark on your grade, not the money. Yeah, I didn't even think even just letter of the law, I didn't even think it was a flagrant no, foul. No, he touched his head, though. Contact to the head. Anything Contact above the shoulders will be reviewed. When they perceive, perceive, his head moved a little bit. Yeah, maybe, he kissed, maybe, maybe, slight. maybe he kissed him on the he cheek. Also, he know. also, <laughs> Tyshawn Alexander does the head thing. Every yeah, he time does he gets, every time. So he can't, he's, he's a little boy who cried wolf yet. Yeah. yeah. Now it's a six point game for Clemson. Cannot make this a four, five point possession. Must get a stop. It's unfortunate though. Clemson had momentum going and now you give him some free points. Oh, -ho, he did it again. <laughs> Epperson up top. Tyson Alexander asking for a quick break, pointing to the bench. See that in your Clemson, you want to attack them. Thomas had oh, it ripped away. What a play. Yep, great weak side help. Great weak side help. Great hands from Cashaw back the other way. Throw it up. Oh, yeah. Go to work, son. Buckets. Big mismatch right there. Go to work. Epperson with back-to-back -back buckets, and the lead is back into double figures at 10. Hunter Tyson, 6'8". But still, that was a mismatch. Not letting Reed get anything going. He's 4 for 13. And the turnover. It's Reed. That might get go. him going. And how many times have we seen Clemson playing downhill? Not often. You know, the commenters just gave us the best compliment you could get is Mince misses for three. A bunch of saying pro Creighton announcers and others saying pro Clemson. That's the best compliment you can get. Yep. Out of bounds, it'll be Clemson basketball. We told you what they think of Epperson as a roll to the rim guy. And 
Caleb Joseph, pick and roll, sees the sees the flat hedge, just throws it to the rim. That's the second time he's done. And then yep. you feel good about yourself. You get it done. Throw it back to him in the post. Yep. Good miss. The young big guy. And on that play, Doug Reed was where he was supposed to be, but he's so much smaller. And you throw it high, it's really nothing he could do. Well, that that's where defensively your big guy has to have his hands up. Make that make that pass. Make the pass hard. Great deflected. defense, cross-court pass is picked off. Marquise. How about Mintz saving it to Ballant? Marquise Reed picking up his dribble. There's Caleb Joseph. Scar the rebound, and he's fouled. And Connor Cashaw. Let's not undersell the juggling of the lineups by Greg McDermott. Cashaw is a kid who led Rice in scoring and rebounding last year, struggled to kind of find a role. Mm -hmm. But he sat Jefferson a bunch here and played cash off as a small three and four. Kind of mix, mixing and matching his lineups and really seems to be having Creighton try and figure it out in the fly. Using Caleb Joseph, who hasn't been great this year, but getting some minutes out of him instead of using extended minutes from the freshman Zagorowski. Scar from Zadar, Croatia. At eight points and three steals on Tuesday against Georgia. There's two years of Dalpo. Sorry, Joy. Seven point lead for Creighton, 61 54. And it'll stay that way. It's ironic, her name is Joy. <laughs> Under nine to go in the second half. Caleb Joseph, the left hand dribble, the right hand floater. And Johnny Newman, the third, just got caught up on the screen and quit. And that's where it's a tough spot to put a freshman in, and he was totally lost. Poor nice. a good spot. Oh, and back to back, poor possessions for Johnny Newman. But he gets him back. But Newman, the whistle for the foul. So poor defensive play and then the poor bad pass. pass. Yeah. Well, uh, it probably it's twofold. Down. Sims, Sims gone. This is what I mean. Poor defense. Watch. He just kind of dies on the screen. You're going underneath on Caleb Joseph. Oh come just, on. Yeah. He just, get, he's already threw it. I don't know if he thought they were switching or yeah, what he maybe, thought they were doing. Maybe. And then he, Sims was calling for the ball and when an older player and he had Balak on him calls for the ball in the post. You want to throw it? It was too long a pass. And if you are going to throw it, you got to throw it to the rim where, where only Sims can catch it. Newman is going to take a seat as predicted. And, and, and that's the tough thing. When you come in, you make a couple of mistakes. Freshmen oftentimes, especially ones that are on the seventh, eighth on the roster, on the depth chart, don't get a chance to play through some of that stuff. They get a chance to get told it, but they get told it while they're coming back to the bench to talk to the coaches you saw there. Brad Barnell just trying to steal a couple minutes here in the second half and keeps John Newman the third. But those lessons, this is a hard place to learn yeah. lessons like that against the game Creighton play. Yeah, he'll learn them though. He's going to help them win. Maybe not this year. I mean, he's going to be a role player at best, but someday this could be his team. Trap holding on to that pivot foot. Gets the ball back with 10 on the shot clock. Mitchell. A lot of contact. And it will stay Clemson basketball. Cashaw with good defense. Mitchell kind of led with that off arm. And Cashaw stood tall and knocked the ball out of his hand. To get down there. Yes. That, like you flew out of Chicago. It's, Is it nonstop? Did you have to stop somewhere? It's incredibly easy. Now, I did not fly out of Chicago. I had a, a football game in West Virginia last week. Um, no so no nonstops in Huntington? I took a connection out of Charlotte. <laughs> okay, so non nonstop or yeah, connection? No nonstops. I took a connection out of Charlotte. Let me tell you what. It was it was a very easy two-hour flight. You land right there. They bring your bags down. Could not have been easier. Customs, very quick. It was perfect. Awesome. Highly recommend. Good stuff. And we saw Marty Simmons, former head coach at Evansville, now the assistant to the head coach, Brad Barnell, brought in this year. Of course, those Evans, and you see the coach standing up 
on the sideline barking out orders. We got the standard report at Steve Smith, who recruited many of these players at Clemson. Two, two excellent staffs. And the Clemson story is a good one. I was over there a couple weeks ago for a stadium show we did for the Clemson football game. That's Marty. Lost his job at Evansville, was there over a decade. A tremendous basketball coach, especially the defensive side of the ball. That's the show you did with CJ Spiller? Yeah, CJ nice. Spiller. Yeah, yeah. Eric Wood. It's great. What an unbelievable campus. And, you know, people freak out about the football facilities. The basketball facilities are just as good. <laughs> I mean, right next door, and they are amazing. You know, they thought they were getting Zion Williamson. He took over five unofficial visits and just didn't land it. Caleb Joseph right down Broadway. Creighton's got Missouri Valley Conference represented on their bench as well with Paul Busk, the former Missouri State head coach. When you get those former head coaches having spent time in the big chair, that's so valuable. And Amir Sims has three, so it's 66-59. Seven point game, have to get a stop, and Sims is going to get called for a foul. A little nickel diamond. There's Paul Lusk. He's over at Missouri State in Springfield, Missouri. Now he's focusing on the defense for Greg McDermott at Creighton. Alec and Alexander, Zagorowski, Crumple, and Caleb Joseph getting extended minutes. 14 in white. Alexander, that is a deep three. Oh, no. Why Shit. not? Come Tyshawn on. Alexander. There's no defense for that, though. The career high continues to rise. He's got 29. There's no defense for that. I mean, he just pulled up from 29 feet. You're going to let him shoot that. To your detriment, it turns out. 29 points, so 8 for 13 shooting. Terrific. Scar's got to retreat out towards midcourt. Puts the ball on the floor, oh, and that's great, great defense by Valley. Great hands. Back comes Alexander. Better yeah, locate him quickly. Better find him. Zagorowski will wait for the screen. Grumple, why not? Scar, another rebound. He's got eight. There's Thomas into the corner. Mitchell in front of his own bench, and it's short. Clemson's three for 16 from three. What a great crowd the atmosphere here for this yeah, championship that game. Is. That is pretty awesome. I was going to tell you something that's interesting about these two teams. You, you look on the bench of Clemson, and Antonio Reynolds Dean is one of the assistant coaches. Okay, Antonio Reynolds Dean, remember where he played? Clemson. No. Um, South Carolina? Oh, Antonio Reynolds Dean? Gosh, I can't remember. Anyone? Anyone? He was on Rhode Island's team that oh, took down to Kansas. Yes. Yeah. Right. Brody, beat, yep. beat Kansas. Yep. Preston Murphy, one of the lead assistants for Creighton, also on that team. You know who else was on that team? Rowan Barrett, his son, R.J. Barrett, right, the star at Duke. Of course, we work with a bunch of Kansas that? guys who just want to bring up that game. <laughs> <laughs> after they brought you, bought you barbecue? After, after, after you barbecue, do that? Though, not before they bought the barbecue. <laughs> and it was Kansas that knocked out Clemson last year in the Sweet 16. And that's Preston Murphy standing up uh, on the bench. Got today's scout. You can always tell which coach has the scout. That's usually the only coach that stands up. He also and does the offense. And giving extra he direction. Also does, he also, yeah. You mentioned Paul Lusk. He also yeah. does the offense. That was a Rhode Island team coached by Jim Harris. Jimmy Harris, yep. Uh, so that was a year after Lamar Odom? Uh, yes. Yeah. I don't think we have to collect votes on who the MVP will be if, <laughs> if Creighton holds on. Creighton holds on. Alexander's okay. MVP of the 30. tournament? Yes. Yeah, yeah, there's no doubt in my mind. Nice shot, Alexander has come to play. Vinny Vinny Vici, like we talked about. Came, I saw our conquer. The career high continues to go up. He's got 31.
Now, the impressive part about Creighton, Creighton not known as a great defensive team in their league, especially after losing Kyrie Thomas, their best defensive player. Thomas, great job by Zagorowski to get his hand in there. And in the collision with Balak and Thomas. That and one that's going to be the fourth on Thomas. I've never seen that Man. one before. I know. The play Thomas, was Thomas lost going. the basketball. Play yeah. was over, and he just kind of falling over and fell into Balak, and they called an offensive he foul. He continued to barrel into Barrett. Watch this. He loses it. That's a good call. Yeah, it is. I don't know if you need to call it because they had a fast break. It's a good call. And while there sometimes are flops, that was not a flop. Balak took that contact. And so that's uh, more, That's it's almost, I think that was more of a player control foul than an offensive foul because the ball was already gone. So Thomas will sit down with four personals. Doug Swenson says, year before Lamar, I think you're, I think that's before? incorrect. I, th I think it's after. I think it's the year after. Yeah. So foul trouble for Creighton. Mintz has four. Crumple with three. Four each on the Clemson side for Sims and Thomas. Look at how spread out and how high on the court Creighton is. That's how they create these lanes to the basket. This is college basketball in 2018. Yep, spacing is terrific though, isn't it? Yep. yep. Tyshawn's made three of his last four, and that one rims out. Matched up. That was, that was, I mean, <laughs> got away with it, went class. <laughs> I, I said this earlier today that traveling is a lot like misusing grammar, right? You just know it when, you, <laughs> when you've when you done it. Mm -hmm. like, well, that was bad English. Sorry about that. That one must have felt weird to go in. You got an offensive foul. I think it's going to be on Zagorowski. Yeah, we got to give it a rest with the calls. That's just a handoff. You, I mean, you can't, you can't. Make yourself invisible and get out of the way. Well, but now there, so there's a question then when it comes to this. Does do the officials end up lightening up through the course of the year, they or will. do the players then figure out how the refs are calling the game and then change the way they play? Little both, both though. Yep. And, and and with this, the things that we're complaining about are the new points of emphasis, and officials are on the hook to really call that stuff. And as a result, the players learn that moving screen is certainly one that's in the video that the officials watch at the beginning of the year. Big time shot from Clyde Five. Trapp. Yeah, Boy, they need it. And Trapp, a big time athlete who they want to get more minutes for. Yeah, Hunter Tyson on the floor is a very good shooter. Clemson seems to have figured out something defensively here with their smaller lineup. Now they gotta get their offense going. There's still enough time, enough possessions. They need to get stopped here. Alexander. <laughs> Golly, man, this is something else. Something else. I mean, you just can't leave him, and, and that's what happens when you get a big guy not used to guarding a shooter. They have no help off. Trap, trap again. again. Back to back from Trap. <laughs> this is good stuff. Seven great. point game. It's great. In Georgia, Georgia State, we had Malik Ben Levy just about three hours ago hit eight threes, and now Tyshawn Alexander's got seven, and Trapp coming up with two big ones. And Amir Sims with the save, and then Clyde Trapp. I'm open, open for a reason. They let him shoot. All right. Watch Amir Sims. He just forgets. For a second there, forgets, like, oh, yeah, I'm guarding Tyshawn Alexander. Oh, no! no he's just way too far in. Oh, no! <laughs> you got to stay more attached to that. Point lead for Creighton with 3.20 to go. The high scoring affair making many happy around the country. Is it high enough though? It will be. I get a chance to see the Nap the Battle Bull Pack tomorrow. Up close to the person, right? Yeah. Out yeah. of Vegas. Yeah. yeah. Play Tulsa. And for the winner of Southern Illinois and UMass. Hand off to Ballet. Crumple with Sims on him. He wants to go to the right hand. He comes back with the left. Man. Short. Left is short. And, and that's where analytics tell you make guys shoot post up shots. Mm. Points per possession is 0.777. 
Analytics don't love the long two, but Reed does. And we're down to five. That's also his game, Marquise Reed, bucket getter. 16 points now for Marquise. Oh, interesting that Creighton not going back to Damian Jefferson. Instead, staying with two point guards. Well, they're expecting ball pressure, too, so you want your best ball handlers on. Zagorowski bumped by Trapp. I think, it's, I think that's a good decision, though, Doug. You got Zagorowski, the freshman, who you can rely on. He's been finishing games, which tells you how much they trust him. Yep. Good decision maker, solid defender, hustler. I mentioned he has a twin brother, goes to Lynn University. The two of them combined for 2,900 points in high school. Brother Max, Lynn University down in Boca, D2 school. Where's Damian Jefferson? Defense to offense situation. Well, I think they're going to go with the small lineup. Take oh, they're going really out. small. Yep. Yeah. And Jefferson's going to play the five, which I like this one. Maybe Creighton becomes the Big East team to jump into the AP poll if they get a win over Clemson. This will help. No Big East teams in the latest poll with Villanova dropping out. Villanova was in the one from the top ten. St. To John's out. will probably get in after the win against VCU. As Reed will go to the free throw line. And look, I, I think that was a bad call, but I also think that Zagorowski wasn't really touched at the other end. They're calling everything. Yeah, calling it tight. At the free throw line, Clemson 12 for 17. Creighton 12 for 15. There have been a combined 34 personal fouls called. Mm. Reed is now two for four there today. He went for 24, nine, and two steals on Tuesday against Georgia, did Reed. Defense to offense again here. But Jefferson, back on. Jefferson allows him to switch everything defensively. Yep. Crompo gives them a better offensive rebounder and a low post presence was a roll man. Oh, missed them both. Oh, for two. Senior yeah, that's cost two free that's throws. That's costly. Got to have them. That's devastating. Could have made it a two possession game. Scar is trying to make sure he's glued to Alexander. Well, this is just window dressing here. They're not trying to shoot under 10, to under 10 seconds. And this is what they want. Now they're in attack. Mintz got Sims on the Bucket. hesitation. You can't ask for better execution though. Reed quickly the other yep. way. He answers. Now you got to get a stop. Yeah, you can't afford to let them use 30 seconds and score on the back end. Just a little delay game, as you yep. said, and they'll end up with Likely with Tyshawn Alexander with the ball and a high ball screen. Ballack in a corner. Alexander. Tyshawn Alexander. What a rebound from Trap. Clyde Trap went all the way up to get it. So that's the hurt. stop that Clemson needed. Reed. Ooh. And he's fouled hard by Crumple. Crumple, without being dirty, wanted to just make sure that there was no and one here. Watch his, his feet kind of get stuck up, and yeah, he's just not I mean, It's always good when you see when fans will say the refs are killing us, and just like broadcasters, refs are killing yeah. us, no, refs are killing refs, us. Yep. Because, yeah, the, the officiating hasn't been good, but it's been the same the on both sides. Hey, look, Marquis Reed's too good a player to miss free throws. That, that's missed the previous two, and yeah. that's a big one. 104 to go. Now so Sims struggled defensively covering the perimeter. They're going to ditch the small lineup. So Doug, are you fouling now, or are you going to play one more hard possession for 30 seconds? I'm going to press on a made free throw, but Clemson has yet to press on a made free throw. So, so a couple far of hard now. traps. They're doing it now, then. Yeah. Ballack to inbound. It's Alexander, and he gets out of it. And now Ballack. Man, they weren't, they weren't organized. And that's what happens when you play four guards. Sometimes they don't know who, where the four man is supposed to go and, and, and which one of them is playing. The they're floor. asking why he called timeout. They, they actually had two guards down the floor, both yeah, spaced all out. Turn and look. But yeah. Balak didn't like what he saw, so he yeah. called a timeout. That's fine. 
The only difference here is now you can't run the baseline. Now you call a timeout, yeah. back on the baseline, you can't yeah. run the baseline. Well, yeah, because the hardest part of that is getting the ball in, and they had gotten the ball in, and then he called the timeout. If you haven't sampled it yet, check out Stadium's Monday through Friday programming lineup. So we start today, 10 Eastern. It's the morning show called The Territory. Take you through the biggest stories in sports all around the country. Sauce and Shrimp, it's a riot. It starts at noon, followed by a new high school show called Emerge at 2 Eastern. So if you want to be the one who's up on the guys who are not there yet, watch Emerge at 2 Eastern and Campus Insiders at 2.30. Then we wrap up the day by setting you up for the night in sports with the rally, Game Time in America at 6. Stadium, a new way to watch sports. Welcome to the game. Check out watchstadium.com for more. So can't move on the baseline. Ballack to inbound. Underneath his own basket, it's tricky. Oh, foul, right? Yeah. Oh, and Tyshawn Alexander was fouled by Marquise Reed. They almost had what they wanted, too. Because Alexander would have, would have caught that basketball, maybe even with his toes on the end line. And, and Ballack, I, I like that he moved it. You know, you can, you can pick where you want to take the ball inbounds. Mm -hmm. And I, as a lefty, you want to be on the that side. So but most boy. of the court is on your left side. Yes. Same options. thing if you're right, you want to be in the opposite yep. side. Agreed. So this guy has been Lionel Richie tonight all night long. What Continuing to lock up. I mean, what a game. Yeah, what a game. What, what, a, what a week he's, for him. What, what, what we haven't been able to focus on is how good he's been defensively. Yeah. He's been excellent. You know, when Reed has hit shots... And I mean, like, look, Reed and Mitchell are two big time players and scorers in the ACC. Yep. And they have not been able to go at it. This has been an out of body experience for Tyshawn Alexander, the career high 36 on seven threes at nine of 16 from the floor. And one thing Clemson doesn't really have is a solid three point game that reliable shooters. You got a lot of mid range guys. There you go. Reed has two, uh-oh. As Mintz was headed out of bounds, he gets bumped I mean, by that kind of night for Clemson. Yeah, why would you bump, even, bump him, right? I, I don't think they meant to. I think they were going after the ball. Because yep. that's a turnover waiting to happen. I, I think. Or at least a trap against the sideline. It, it's hard to see from this angle yeah. exactly how much space he had, but I don't think that would, I don't think he meant to foul him. That would have been very difficult to not turn the ball over. He had to run that thing down first. And he had to make sure he stayed in bounds. And then they go bump him. They bail, bail out. That was on draft his third. And Mintz misses the first free throw. Now, regardless of if it's six or five, I'd come down and get a quick one. Quick two? Quick two. Or quick whatever. Quick whatever. Oh, first quick They're running shot. spread. First. They're just going to come down and spread and yeah. go. And they got two push men in Mitchell and Reed. And both of them are solid going downhill, maybe with a ball screen, a back screen. One of two for Mintz. Gonna let Mitchell be the pusher. And he's gonna spread it. Mitchell goes downhill and can't convert. Look now you got a foul, and Ballack is fouled by Trap. And that is that feels like that's gonna just about do it, mostly because of what you said. They don't have the, the shooters. They, they, do just, it. Yep. they just don't. They're, I mean, they're not built that way. Well, I mean, I think that's why they tried to get Hunter Tyson a couple of looks here. Yeah. You're right. They are not built that way. You know, they lost. Grantham got hurt last year. He was he was their big bucket getter at the end of games. Yep. You lose Gabe DeVoe, another guy who can stretch the floor. This is a hell of a win for Creighton, boy. If they hold on, and already the Clemson fans in the comment section are talking about Creighton's non-existent football team. <laughs> Sims uh, traveled. traveled. Colin, bruh, let us know what we should be saying. <laughs> the turnover is Clemson's 19th of the evening. As Mintz is fouled again, and these 1,700 fans who traveled from Omaha are going to be headed to the beach tonight. 
the likely celebration on their minds. Yeah, that's a real feather in the cap right there. This is a good tournament. Well, it's big for the Big East. Yeah. Well, the Big East has had, a, with the exception of St. John's, mm -hmm. even Creighton starting out losing at home to Ohio State. Ohio State, yeah. Now, Georgetown had the win over Illinois, but then struggled when they when they had their own tournament. Now, Big East is taking a bit of a beating, and Creighton jumping up and beating the team in the ACC that's going to play in the NCAA tournament. It's going to win 20-some-odd games. That's a heck of a win. Coach McBuckets, his team, man, he played the game in the 90s. This one was about to be played in the 90s. Give Clemson credit for slowing them down a bit, but not enough thanks to the shooting spree of Tyshawn Alexander. One of two. And oh, one. foul. Mm, Zigarowski foul. whistled for the foul. Just let him go. Is it a foul, though? Doesn't matter. Uh, they called a foul. You got to yeah. know how the game's being called. Yeah, I get it. Let's see well, what. Well, so I tell you, my you, you have to offer some re uh, resistance, though. That, that, oh. that should not he be. He retreated. A foul. He retreated. He did. It should he, not be a foul. Yeah, I agree. That's what my point is. But they have called those all night, yep. and in that particular instance, just stop. Let them lay the ball in. But you can't fault Zagorowski on that. All right. So the three-point play complete from Reed. Five-point game. Oh, wow, there. That's a bad yep. place to get it. Thomas, yep. the turnover. Mitchell, oh, my oh, two more. Oh, oh, my goodness. Three-point game with 22 oh, seconds hold on, hold left. Everything. Oh, We had that benediction pronounced. Stop the music. <laughs> and this is really smart basketball. You know, Creighton yeah. has been kind of overloading. There's two guys on one side. Yeah, that's a bad Mitchell, place to get that inbounds pass, and, though, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it's a bad place, especially when there's another guy right when Mintz is right behind you. Right! The spacing was, was terrible. Yeah, I don't mind catching it flat along the baseline, but I want it on the yeah. opposite side of where you're throwing the ball in. Yeah. Remember, you can run the you can run the baseline yeah. so that the, the guy on the ball has a long run. Yeah, he put he put Zagorowski in jail. There was nothing he could do there. All boy, right, Mintz hits boy, the first. They need that free throw right there. Two possessing game now. Nick, good to have you watching from Denver. For a five-point lead, Mintz connects. Reed pulls up for three. Jefferson and Tyson go for the rebound. Everybody's loose on the floor and will be, be Creighton basketball. You can't <laughs> the hustle, as Jay Z would say, to take a look at this loose ball and how serious is this this is a big possession get down on the floor give up your body and the possession arrow unfortunately for clemson goes to creighton there are some who wouldn't mind a four-point creighton win 85 <laughs> 80 in front at the moment Valak, the exclamation point. It's Davion Mintz. Reed gets two, and with four seconds left. <laughs> oh, imagine if you're we'll standing. Have a timeout. In, imagine if you're standing in Vegas with one of those tickets right now. <laughs> it's a second half ticket. Smartly puts Cash Shaw in the game. You get your veterans in there. And you get an easy run out and hope, and Mintz gets a chance to smile and laugh about it. Nothing like winning any tournament, right? And that's the thing with some of these other tournaments. They had to win three games in three days. Yeah. Great preparation for the Big East tournament play in the Garden for the Blue Jays. And I think for Clemson, they're starting to figure out what their holes are. I know there's a formula to beat Clemson, though. We saw it today. But not everybody can get up and down the way the Blue Jays play in terms of pace. 
Andy, we know Creighton wasn't favored. There's different sorts of lines. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're aware. <laughs> if you didn't enjoy the first half, you take a look at the second half. Yes. <laughs> Coming up for Clemson, they've got James Palmer Jr. and Nebraska on Monday and Mississippi State. Coming up on December 8th in Newark, New Jersey. Won't be an easy one against Radford, who beat Notre Dame middle of December. Mike Jones, head coach Radford, former Shaka Smart assistant. Represented the Big South in the NCAA tournament last year. Oh, let him go and <laughs> ah, <it> no foul. <laughs> Five point victory for Creighton. <laughs> And the Omaha faithful will travel back 1,700 miles with the trophy of the Cayman Island Classic. Well done by Tyshawn Alexander. Put that team on his shoulders. Dyson Alexander with the career high 36 points. The sophomore went 9 of 16 from the floor, 7 of 12 from three, a perfect 11 for 11 from the stripe. And let's go down to Kristen. Coach, three games, three wins in three days, and you cap it all off by a win over number 16 Clemson, and you're taking home that Cayman Islands Classic trophy. What was the key here tonight? Well, I think defensively the first half is where it all started, and obviously Brad made some adjustments the second half and took us a while to adjust to that switching, but I thought our guys kept their composure, and fortunately the clock ran out because they were coming out after us hard. What can you take away from this tournament that you can take back to the States? You know, we didn't really have our mojo offensively in our three games at home. We weren't able to really establish our pace, and it took us to go 1,700 miles uh, to a different country to get doing what we needed to do. But, um, you know, our bench gave us a big lift. Connor Cashaw, Caleb Joseph were awesome that second half, and obviously Tyshawn Alexander had a special night. That's what I was going to ask you about this guy right here, career high, 36 points. What can you say about his performance? Well, you know, he, he's worked at it. You know, when, when we lost Marcus Foster and Kyrie Thomas, made the decision to go to the NBA. We needed somebody to step into that scoring role. And to Tyshawn's credit, he spent a lot of time working in the gym in the offseason to prepare himself for a night like tonight. Let's talk to him right here. Oh, hug there between coach and player. Tyshawn, congratulations. Career high, 36 points. Felt like you couldn't miss from three. What clicked for you tonight? Uh, really, coach just told me to come in and sit there, uh, be confident, do everything what I got to do to sit there and get the team. A win, but I can't do nothing besides my team. My team came out here, we played strong. We had to do what we had to do, and we came here, we don't leave without a win. Three games in three days. How did you and your team pull through? With, and what's a very tough schedule? Uh, pretty much, we just sat there and sat on our feet. I mean, get off our feet a lot. We had to sit there and play with our momentum. We had to sit there and play hard. We had to sit there and play as a team. Coach really fought us every single day. We had to get our nutrition in. We had to do everything again to get our, our bodies right. We know this fan base travels well. You got a lot of fans watching on Facebook, too. What do you want to say to everybody who's out there supporting you guys? Thank you for everything that I've done. Go Jays, and we're here for y'all. We're coming back uh, next week. We're going to sit there and do it over again. Let's go, Jays. All right, go celebrate with your team, Tyshawn. Thank you so much. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Kristen. Thanks, Tyshawn. And thanks to Coach McDermott as Creighton. With a five-point victory, 87-82 in the championship game of the Cayman Island Classic. Tim, biggest takeaway from the night? Well, you know, Creighton was Doug, Mc, Doug um, Gottlieb's dark horse, and with good reason. Out of the Big East, they represented well, and they couldn't have done it without a gargantuan effort from Tyshawn Alexander. A well-deserved tournament. Clemson's going to be fine in the ACC, but that was a big win for the Big East and in particularly for Creighton. The 2018 Cayman Islands Classic Champions, the Creighton Blue Jays, will enjoy Thanksgiving just a bit more. Clemson shot 53% from the floor, but just five of 19 from three, and they turned the ball over 19 times. 15 points off those turnovers for Creighton. Creighton 56% from the floor. 
10 of 26 from three, seven of those coming from Tyshawn Alexander, who will undoubtedly be the MVP of the tournament. He certainly had help, though. There are some fine performances, a great coaching job by Coach Greg McDermott. They played to their strengths. They kept the pace up the entire tournament. Played in the 90s, got into the high 80s today, and it was enough for three wins in three days. Congratulations to the Creighton Blue Jays. Next up for Creighton. On Wednesday, they've got Montana, an NCAA tournament team a year ago. And then on Saturday, December 1st, Gonzaga coming to Omaha, fresh off their Maui Sex. championship, and could be the number one team in the country. They could be after today, beating number one Duke. Then they'll have a trip to Nebraska, followed by Wisconsin Green Bay, and then going to Oklahoma on December 18th. And coming up next for Clemson, as mentioned, Monday against Nebraska. They've got Mississippi State on December 8th, Radford on the 15th. They'll go to South Carolina on December 22nd. The Creighton faithful deserve it. They traveled a long way, 1,700 miles, to see their Creighton Blue Jays play in the Cayman Islands. And I don't think they'll be able to put that championship sign in the overhead. <laughs> For our entire crew, broadcast partners Doug Gottlieb, Tim Scarborough, and Kristen Balboni, I'm Noah Kozlov saying so long from the Cayman Island Classic, where Creighton gets a five-point win over Clemson to take home the championship trophy. For more live games, replays of classic games, and daily original studio programming, watch stadium.com or search stadium in your local channel guide. We do appreciate all the support, all the comments, all the love, and even a little bit of the criticism. We hope you all enjoy your Thanksgiving holiday. Be safe, and thanks for watching.